Okay, so hi everybody. I hope uh, everybody is well. I mean, here it's incredible. The weather is it's amazing. I mean, it's still about um, 30 degrees. Uh, as you can see, it's all very, very sunny. So, um, okay, so we continue with uh, our history of Portugal. And uh, as we've seen last week, uh, when Prince Henry the Navigator dies in 1460, uh, some uh, 1,500 miles of African coastline, coastline had been discovered and partially mapped, and the Azores and Madeira Island were already active colonies. Uh, in the next two decades, Portuguese captains made more progress, venturing do down uh, further north, the northwestern coast of Africa, past uh, present-day Sierra Leone and uh, Liberia into the Gulf of Guinea. At this time, the Portuguese were enjoying a tremendous advantage over other European nations in both ship design and navigation. Uh, I hope you had the time to watch uh, some of the vi videos I put on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, if, no, if not, go on the YouTube channel and you will find it in the history uh, list okay um, so the Portuguese were able to determine their latitude by sighting the North Star through an astrolabe and measuring the apparent distance of the star from the horizon eventually they were also able to explore waters south of the Ecuador where the South Star was not visible these, improven, these improvements in navigational instruments and methods led to refinements in the field of cartography. I mean, Portuguese maps of the 15th century and 16th centuries um, were probably the best in Europe and in the world. And uh, foreign spies in Lisbon often attempted to buy or steal them because they were so good. As a result, the Portuguese had to safeguard their maps by giving them the status of state secrets. A royal decree, decree forbade the circulation of maps showing the sailing routes south of the Congo River in Africa. Um, and going back in the chronology of the Portuguese incredible discoveries, those incredible journeys, um, so if we continue that, in 1487, Bartolomeu Dias sailed from Lisbon with two caravels and a supply ship and became the first to round the African continent. I mean, nobody had, had gone so far south. He sailed on for, few, for a few days, but fearful of running out of food and exhausted by the freezing weather, he turned back. He arrived in Lisbon in December 1488 and told King Jean II court of his uh, marking of the southern extent of Africa. Among those present was the Genoese navigator Christopher Columbus. Uh, Columbus was disheartened to hear the news because he had come to the king of Portugal to present him with his own proposal for reaching Asia, or as it was known, the Indies, by sailing west. Remember that the main reason that the Portugal uh, that Portugal was so keen to discover uh, a sailing road to India was exactly to put an end to the trade monopoly of the powerful, at that time, North Italian cities of Genoa and Venice. You remember, we saw that last week. So the king did listen to Columbus and established a committee consisting of geographers, mathematicians and cartographers to look into it. There was reason to believe there were the undiscovered islands to the west, and we're talking to the west, yeah. since from time to time various unknown objects drifted onto the shores of the Azores or other islands and even mainland Europe. So it was well known uh, at that time by educated men that the earth was round, so land to the west was a certainty, but no one knew how far it was. So. Um, um, contrary to what I said last week, so people knew already that the earth was wrong, I mean the educated man. Uh, the king, however, was going to reject Columbus' proposal because he had already invested a good deal of money in the African road to the Indies, to the Indies, so to the west. Columbus wanted to go to the, uh, sorry, to the east, 
Columbus wanted to go to the West. Dissipation of royal resources would be dangerous and the demands by Columbus were too high for the king like him. And indeed Columbus was demanding to be made admiral of the ocean sea and be given the hereditary title of Vicero of all lands he discovered as well as one tenth of the profits he brought back. <laughs> he was a bit uh, greedy, wasn't he? This definitely deterred the king who had, after all, many competent Portuguese um, navigators at his disposal. And here, um, I think this is quite fascinating here, this, ep this uh, episode of Christopher, Christopher Columbus in Portugal uh, had been, has been very well related in the book by José Rodríguez de Santos, uh, a very well-known um, journalist and now author uh, at the RTP, the um, Public Portuguese Television Channel. Um, he's a very, very good, very interesting journalist. He worked for CNN, he was in Asia, so very, very clever guy. He's, he has written since, you know, six or seven books uh, which are bestsellers. And his book, um, one of the first, O Codex 632, uh, was a huge success here in Portugal a few years ago, and it tells the story based on real documents that they, are, they were actually... Um, believe it or not, two Columbus in history. One is called Colombo and was a poor, ignorant, plebeian, Genoese wool weaver. And the other one, the discoverer of America, is called Colomb or Colon. And he was not a trader for Genoa, but uh, an Iberian nobleman who could speak several languages, including Latin. Furthermore, he was a close friend of the Portuguese king and had knowledge of cosmography and, mathemat and mathematics. Um, and only the second one could marry Dona Filippa. So that's his theory, that there were two Columbus, and the Columbus that we know um, was not from Genoa. He was a Naberian nobleman, uh, very well educated. So that was based on um, real documents. So who knows? So Columbus went off to seek his fortunes in Spain, where he got the support he wanted. Um, so now let's do a little parenthesis here uh, with a story about Columbus. Um, Columbus' first voyage brought him to San Salvador Island in the Bahamas, part of several islands group later referred to the West Indies which he took to be the outer reaches of Asia. So he was, he was completely wrong. <laughs> he was to the west and Asia was is to the east. On his return to Europe, Columbus rushed to Lisbon, where he told a fantastically embellished story of jewels and gold roofs houses he found, which would have been put in Portugal's hand if only the king had believed him. However, again, the Portuguese king, you know, uh, very rightly, um, believed a little of what Columbus claimed beyond the fact that the new islands had that new islands had been discovered. I mean these islands were to the west of Africa and not on the way to India that Portugal so despe desperately was looking for. So this brought however the king of Portugal, now King Manuel I, uh, to choose Vasco de Gama to lead the first Portuguese expedition around Africa to find a way to India. So Bartolome, Bartolome Diaz when, you know, was the first to go around the Africa continent, but it's uh, Vasco de Gama who was uh, going to lead Portugal to the further, further east to India. A trip that was going to become so famous uh, because Vasco de Gama managed to sail until India and, very important, uh, came back. Uh, but this is for next week, okay? So we are at the start of the reign of Manuel I and the great period of the discoveries. This is really the golden age. Um, and actually, Manuel reign from 1495, so at the end of the 15th century into the 16th century. So his reign went from 1495 to 1521 
not that long if you think about it, marked the highest points in Portugal golden age of discovery and conquest. His marriages were made to reinforce ties with Spain, particularly his third marriage in 1518 was with Leonor, sister of Carlos III, king of Spain. I, th I find it very, very interesting. I mean, this is, a, and I hope you like it. I mean, this is quite a, a interesting facts, which, um, you know, we have that embellished story about all that time. But when you go into more details, you see that actually it was not, it was not, um, it was different. You know, uh, that story about Christopher uh, Columbus is amazing. Okay, so. As usual, I hope you like the video. Like like it if you if you have. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go on the Facebook page. Go on www.lisbonnaturally.com. Now October, November, December for me is the best period to come to Lisbon. So if you have a, a long weekend coming soon, uh, think about Lisbon. Okay. But uh, as usual, we see you next uh, next week, and have a good time. Okay. Thanks. Bye.